For years, Hollywood was chasing China and the Communist Party trying to get their movies in, but now it's all tears out of the entertainment industry. For it seems that Beijing is not only the Middle Kingdom, but also giving Hollywood the middle finger, saying no longer will your movies linger here in our theaters. Folks will tell you why this is a devastating blow to those who blew so much money on China. Hello folks, welcome back. We are happy to have you as we continue to come to you from the studio in somewhere sunny USA where the sun is always shining and truth does indeed prevail. Today we are saying hail to each and every one of you out there. That's H-A-I-L folks. Sorry, it's YouTube lingo. Don't be confused. And we are welcoming you to the knowledge of just how badly things have gone for Hollywood with their investment efforts over the past 15 years perhaps with China. It seems that it's all over. This is just the sort of conversation and information that you need to know. Click the like button and let's dive in right now. And it is that uh, apparently all yeah. this investment and all of this time that's been spent trying to get into China, into the Middle Kingdom, uh, Beijing giving the middle finger back at uh, the West. And so uh, we've said this for a long time. And, and, you know, it's not just movies that we've always thought uh, was risky business over in Beijing and Shanghai. It's also the theme parks that we've been talking about. That's not quite up on the uh, radar yet. But I would say that investing in, uh, uh, in into the real estate over in China, if you're a major entertainment company, probably not wise. Let's deal, though, with the movies for now. This is out of CNBC. It's by Dylan Butts. Folks, don't laugh. All right, Beijing and Hollywood. Seriously, <laughs> maturity, folks. Beijing and Hollywood are decoupling as Chinese audiences favor domestic productions. Here's what it says. Hollywood blockbusters have dominated international box office for decades, but in recent years, they have lost luster in the largest movie market outside the U.S., China. As we continue to read, though, folks, I want to remind everyone that the, the, the play here has always been the idea that Hollywood would convince Beijing at some point to give them a higher percentage of the box office take home. And the reason for that was they thought not only could they influence China in terms of values and culture, but they could also influence China to open the doors a, a bit more in commerce. That has never happened. So even when these companies declare these record-breaking box office results, and in no small part due to China, they haven't been taking home the same amount, proportionally, of money uh, because China gives back so little. It's often less than 20% that the, these uh, companies receive back from those, uh, from those revenues. Walt Disney Company's latest film, Deadpool and Wolverine, has taken the world by storm since its release on July 22nd, becoming the highest grossing R-rated film of all time but it has failed to replicate the success among Chinese moviegoers. And, by the way, one might say that given that your social credit score is determined uh, by all of your choices in life in China, uh, maybe they're not going to see Deadpool and Wolverine because maybe it doesn't look good on them to the CCP. Don't know, just speculating. While the Marvel superhero sequel made a respectable $57 million in its first 20 days in China, a locally produced comedy drama successor made six times as much in the time period, according to data from Malian.com. Released on July 16th, Successor continues to thrive in Chinese theaters. As of Monday, it had grossed over $439 million to submit itself as China's third most watched movie of the year, Deadpool and Wolverine, languishes at number 15. Now, I would love to see the Chinese version of Deadpool and Wolverine translated. I have a feeling <laughs> that the humor of Deadpool yeah. and Wolverine was not fully captured in the Chinese uh, uh, dubbing. Uh, well, I, I, I will say this. That we actually did a story on this on that park place, and it got uh, got flattened by the algorithm. Um, <laughs> so in the in the China version, they had subtitles that were translated for the Chinese audience. I think there might have been a couple of things cut out of the dub, but it sounded like the audio stayed put. So the American English audio stayed in most. Well, oh, that's of fascinating. Your, your, I wouldn't have thought they would have allowed it in. Yeah, would, maybe you're afraid to laugh for fear people will realize you speak English and have been listening to uh, all those uh, summies dot radio broadcasts from Radio Free China or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but well, when you said that outfit is called Mao Yan, I am imagining uh, the the imperial leader there putting his little pinky to his lips and saying. Our movie made million dollars. Yeah, President Pooh Bear while he eats his honey. Yeah, the headline, uh, the headline, audiences favored domestic productions. 
Well, I think, heck, how do we know what audiences favor? This the is, audience, this is yeah, one the, more story that pretends that their economy, their social structure, their police state is anything like the rest of the world. It's not. That's exactly it, Lou. They're favoring the domestic movies because they're pushing the domestic movies because the money that the domestic movies make go where? To the government, where all the money goes. Yeah, right. and I'll also point out here, there have been little oddities here. Like uh, like uh, there was a movie called Wolf Warrior 2, or that's at least what the translation of it is, that showed up in the uh, in, uh, on the, uh, the list of top 100 movies worldwide at some point. But it didn't make a mark in the United States. I looked at the plot. There's a, a lot of reasons why it would not connect with an American audience. But I think yeah. that but China, also, just you know, like the any are major, producing and wrapped up their production along with the Russians of of their own like studios mm -hmm. that are really pushing out like this is not woke. Like if you look at certain like Russian productions, well, you can't really now because of things that are going on. But before they were really pushing like very testosterone driven like super top gun and superhero movies and stuff and they're not really popular in the united states but they're popular in south america they're popular in brazil uh india and things like that and a lot of indian movies mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that's coming out of asia that is very 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 uh you know exciting and testosterone driven right and now they're gearing towards this whole like we're not woke this is you'll get it men are going to be men women are going to be women and all that kind of stuff and the chinese market i mean if we look at right now the number one video game right now being played is a chinese game right blacksmith black myth wukong black myth is, wukong which, yeah, which we'll talk about the, the thing that I, I there is one one thing i want to say here before we get it we have to also remember and i don't think these numbers are so so close to each other that fudging <laughs> makes the difference here the Chinese government is just as willing as Disney uh, to to shift the narrative here more in their favor or count something that wouldn't necessarily be counted if you were really trying to represent it to like a, a shareholder in the United States or something like that. So um, Beijing is willing to, in the same way that Disney will fudge the numbers a little bit, Beijing is more than happy to show that their films are doing well, even if they're not. But, but Fletch, you mentioned something that I think is amazing. Uh, the testosterone fueled cinema. I think about this movie Fighter, uh, oh, that yeah. is a Bollywood film that is essentially a, a an Indian Top Gun. And I might have it might be Tollywood, not Bollywood. I don't know. But if you told me today that the director of that film was in charge of the next GI Joe, I would be so excited. Like, yeah, yeah. If you have Rashomuli this directing the next GI Joe or Avengers film, you know you're like, oh my gosh. If you have any of this new top korean directors that are out there right now directing anything marble they will make a billion dollars guaranteed mm -hmm. and it's it's just it's changing they're just because a lot of a lot of these countries that are have more sh you know uh you know commie loving you know countries you know they do kind of don't want to see that that kind of you know kind of soft uh you know to stop non-testosterone driven stuff for good reason and uh, it's, you know, it's having a, a completely backlash in, in a lot of countries. No, let, no, let me no, talk. Uh, there's, there's an obvious question we're not asking. Where is the Godzilla minus from China? <laughs> Seriously. Well, Seriously. We haven't seen any of those movies over here. And to say, well, it's a different cultural whatever. Big deal. They obviously aren't. Well, they're often, say, they're often they're often propagandistic. And, 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 well, but that's my point. When you say, "Well, they like it better if their own movies do well because the money stays there," they're not in the movie business for the money. They're in the movie right. business for the control. Yes. They're in the okay, movie so, business for the psychological, political control of the people. Period. So let let, let me toss this idea out, and Lou, Paul, you guys, get, tell me what you think about this. So, Hollywood has been chasing the Chinese market for a very long time, decade plus. Hollywood was willing to sacrifice all of the Western values needed to get their foothold inside China. So if we needed to remove particular flags from backpacks and from uh, jackets in Top Gun, so be it. If you needed to remove any references to particular areas in the world, so be it. If you needed to be anti-freedom, so be it. If you needed to spend a third of your movie uh, in China, in order to try to grab that audience, audience, even when it doesn't make sense, so be it. 
If you needed to be anti-democracy, so be it. Whatever. Throw every value you have away to get into China. What appears to me to have been part of the calculus out of Beijing to get rid of Hollywood and decouple is wokeism. And what's amazing to me is it seems that Hollywood and the rest of the entertainment industry was willing to drop every value there is, every good value the West believes in, up until woke. And they won't drop woke. They'll go broke in the Middle Kingdom before they will drop it. What do you guys make of that? Well, do you remember mm. when uh, when John Cena called Taiwan a country and they made him bow yeah. and scream? I play, and apologize. I play that clip at least twice a week on my live streams of him being what like, about- Hao Jung-gu, what a John Cena, but now they won't touch the woke <laughs> stuff. That's got to... What about the, the uh, thank you to the government that runs the Uyghur camps where they shot Mulan? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> but folks, they do. it's a but, war. But but why are and we the, woke up to it? We woke up to the war by trying to deindustrialize that all the con- it, it's no different from Hollywood than it is from the semiconductor business or the car business or anything else. Well, uh, I, we are now having to bring ma- manufacturing that has been in China back out whether it's to Southeast Asia or whether it's back to America. And it will take 10 years to do it, but it's happening because they realize it was a false prophet that they had this massive audience. Look at all those bodies that could be sitting in seats watching our movies. Yeah, but only if the boss tells them it's okay. And if they decide, well, we always talk about the parks, about Disney's parks being, they only own 40 some odd percent on paper. But if tomorrow Beijing says, no, you know, we think we'd rather have 75%. What are <laughs> how, they, in your park. how do they say no? How do they say answer? You can't. So uh, I think uh, in a man who's made so many mistakes, so many mistakes in the grand history of the Disney company, hitching your wagon to a star called China is going to be one of the worst. Yep. One of the absolute worst. But now the question Bro- that I think that pro why why not wokeism why are they holding the line there and i think it's because they got caught they got caught shrinking john boyega on the on the posters and they got such a backlash in this country i think that now they're making a concentrated effort not to do it anymore and that's going to come back to bite them financially and let's be honest they didn't really make that much money when it came down to it they made the appearance of making lots of money but they never really That's right. brought that money back yeah. to the United States folks we've come to the end isn't it sad but don't worry for we shall meet again if you so choose and you can do so simply by clicking that subscribe button you can also know when new videos are on the way by turning on notifications also we would surely love a like button click click it once not twice but if you do thrice is fine to return it back to a thumbs up indeed. Help us be the opposite of the Snow White trailer if you know what I mean. Folks, drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. And until the next time, we are looking very forward to spending time with you. An attitude of gratitude each and every time we get the chance. It is an honor. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.